we're continuing our innings with cricket. The first day of the Cricket West Indies Women's Super 50 Cup took place on Monday in St. Kitts and Nevis with wins for Jamaica, Windward Islands and Guyana. Led by Stefani Taylor and Chanel Henry, Jamaica comprehensively beat Barbados, who are without Haley Matthews, by 200 runs. Here are the scores. All right. So from round one, we had Jamaica women 293 and 46.5 overs. That 99 coming from skipper Stefani Taylor and Chanel Henry, of course, pitching in with a big 93. Barbados women went on to bat and they, of course, got they were dismissed for 89 all out in the 37.4 overs. Najani Cumberbatch 22 and Asabi Calendar 14. What about the bowlers? Stefani Taylor doing the damage for the Jamaican woman with 2 for 16. And Vanessa Watts 2 for 24. For the Bayesians, they had Aliyah Allen 3 for 24. And Alison Gordon 2 for 35. Do we have any more scorecards? All right, well... Let's welcome Vernon Springer, who joins us for the review. Good afternoon, Vernon. How are you? Uh, good afternoon. Not good news for you. going down. Yeah, it was a really tough one for me to watch, Vernon. Of course, um, you know, a bit of disappointment. But we're going to look now at the other scores from day one, and we'll get to them. So we'll have. A good bit of time to discuss what went wrong, what went right, and hopefully they can rectify those errors moving forward. So the Jamaica Barbados match first, Vernon Stefani Taylor reminding us of why we loved her so, so much. 99, it's unfortunate she didn't get that 100. And of course, the skipper grabbing two wickets as well. Well, the Jamaica women all right, Vernon, one second, please. We're having a bit of audio issues, so we're going to try to rectify that. In the meantime, I'm going to turn to my trusted Lance Whitaker, who's with me on set, Lance Stefani Taylor, just giving us a taste of, you know, who she is. Stefani Taylor is somebody who, once she picks up a bat or a ball, she has been very dominant. It's just sad that due to injuries, we would have missed out on some of that from her. It was good to see her back. Yeah, she has labored a bit in the past couple of years, Stefani Taylor, with her, her injury issue. Uh, but judging from the performance yesterday, along with Chanel Henry, because not only that they got 90s, but they scored them briskly, uh, which is what you want to see in, in, in white ball cricket. And um, at, at 32 years old, if we think, as we really do, that uh, Stefani is in the twilight of her career. Maybe she's using this uh, CWI uh, Super 50 tournament just to remind th the fans and maybe even global, franchi global franchises mm -hmm. around the world that she's, she's still got it because I, I see where, you know, with like the 100 and the Big Bash and, uh, you know, even the IPL, the WPL that is, that is ongoing, she wasn't a part of that. But if Stefani Taylor is on her game, She's still one of the best players in the world, both with bat and ball. So um, I think yesterday was a statement that Stefani still has more shots to fire. Yeah, and what about the Barbados team? I know you touched on Chanel Henry from Jamaica, so she got her flowers. The Barbados team would feel, you know, a bit hard done because, one, they're the defending champions in the Super 50 and the T20 lands. They're without their regular skipper, Haley Matthews, but they still have the rest of their squad. And Barbados, you know, being dismissed not even batting out the 50 overs. Yeah, hugely disappointing start there for the Barbadians. And uh, I would have considered yesterday's result an upset result with Jamaica winning, given the fact that the Jamaican team last year performed really, really badly. And uh, I know that the Barbados team without Hayley Matthews isn't the same. And I also recognize that coming from, league, like, even 2019, when Barbados were double champions as well, a Barbados team without Matthews and uh, Deandra Dottin, who would have been part of their setup for many years, isn't the same as the one that we saw yesterday. But I still think there is enough quality in this Barbados team that would have made them hugely disappointed with what happened yesterday. Because to lose a 50-over match by 200 runs yeah. is 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 
unforgivable. And I'm pretty certain that the coaching staff uh, would be getting to work with the Barbadian girls to ensure that they can lift themselves from that result. Yeah, Vernon Springer is back with us. Vernon, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm hearing you loud and clear, Maria. Yeah, Lance and I was just discussing, you know, how disappointing it is for the defending champions to be defeated against Jamaica. Yesterday, we were also speaking about, you know, Stefani Taylor, looking like the Stefani Taylor we know. Well, I think, the first of all, you would have to look at the Barbados bowling attack, and they only, they use something, they use like six bowlers, and they had a pretty off day. Um, and when you say off day, you're talking about 15 wides and eight no balls, eight buys, nine leg buys, a total of some 40 extras. So they really were off the boil. But I think they ran into a Taylor and Henry who on any given day can be able to take a game away from anyone. Yeah. And Taylor looks like she's on a mission um, to be able to make a statement. And as Lance said, uh, recovering back from some injuries, we hope that she can be able to, you know, stay fit and stay on the park um, long enough that she can be able to take it to a next level. But there must be some major concern, as I was speaking to you guys before, about how we are seriously dealing with women's cricket in the Caribbean and in terms of the preparation of coming into a tournament. Um, you would look and you would recognize for Barbados, the defending champions, yes, they're without um, their captain, Haley Matthews, but to lose by 200 runs, it's almost like a wake-up call to find out what is happening with women's cricket in Barbados. Yeah, good point there, Brennan. And I know as the competition goes on, we'll be looking at the different points and, of course, highlighting them. But in the meantime, let's take a quick look now at the other matches and the results. Okay, so we have this one, of course, the Guyanese woman defeating Leeward Islands woman. Guyana batted first and, of course, got a 142 in 36.3 overs. Then we had from Rilana Griman, 37, Shabika Gajnabi, 20. And of course, the pick of the bowlers for the Leeward Islands women would be Shanisa Hector, 3 for 11, and Roselle Lybird, 2 for 17. The Leeward Islands women, they only got to 86 in 36.5 overs. Um, among the batters, the top batters, Divya Saxena, 19, and Renice Boyce from Trinidad and Tobago. She was able to make 16. Pick off the Guyanese bowlers, Lafiana Millington, 4 for 10, and Nia Lachman, 3 for 27. All right, and then that final match where the Trinidad and Tobago Divas were defeated. They made 185 in 48.2 overs. Their top scorers were Leanne Kirby with 59 and Samara Ramnas with 28. Who were the pick of the bowlers for the Winwood Islands women? Afi Fletcher, she got 3 for 40. Karina Noel, 2 for 18. The Winwood Islands women were able to make that total 186 for 8 in 49 overs. Janila Glasgow, picking up 62 runs, and Narissa Crafton, 45. Pick up the bowlers for Trinidad and Tobago women, Karishma Ramharak with 2 for 19, and Steffi Sugrim, 1 for 16. So, Vernon is still with us. What's going wrong with the TNT Red Force Divas? Mm. A whole lot. I think when you look at the Trinidad and Tobago team yesterday, the only one person really turned up. I guess the veteran, Leanna Kirby, at 36 years old, 59 of 40 balls, 57 minutes. So she really was in an attacking mood, 8 fours and 1 six, and sort of brought Trinidad and Tobago back into some respect. Um, but the Windward Islands, they, they, they showed their resilience, their fighting resilience, um, by getting over the line in the, in the 49th over. And I think that would have come down to, you know, it was nice to see a 20-year-old left-hander batsman, Janela Glasgow, scoring 62. She spent some time at the crease, 114 balls, 139 minutes. So that's good. And Narissa Crafton scoring 45 or 77 balls, um, also with four fours and 86 minutes. I think also what would have maybe helped them over the line would uh, you would have somebody like a Pearl Etienne, the veteran who came in and scored a, a brisk 23 of 22 balls, 34 minutes at the crease. So she kind of more or less stabilized the, the lower order of the Windward Islands women's team. So not all, not 
all out man shouting because Afi Fletcher in the bowling for the Windward Islands, she maybe had an off day. Um, she picked up three for 40. Um, so the Trinidad and Tobago, I think we'll have to go back to the drawing board. And I think it's going to boil down to the young batters in the Trinidad and Tobago team stepping up um, in a very important game. Tomorrow against Barbados, um, Barbados would have lost and Trinidad would have lost. So that, that could be a good matchup. Yeah, well, Vernon, I wanted to get a quick comment from you because we were talking on Friday when we were previewing the competition that the Windward's preparation has been good because they did have their Windward Islands uh, regional, sub-regional championship in Grenada in the weeks leading up. And they were in St. Kitts for probably a week and a half playing warm-up matches and so on. And we see the performance yesterday because I would think beating Trinidad and Tobago could be regarded as upset and as up, an upset result. But I think it is part of what we were discussing about the Windwards being one of the better prepared teams coming into the tournament. Well, they've gone a, a, a notch up, um, Lance. The, their backroom staff, is, they've also got a psychologist which they have employed um, to the team. And so you could see that coming out in the Trinidad and Tobago game, the bigger game where you know, they came from behind. You would have to say from behind because chasing that score, it looked as if Trinidad and Tobago was going to give them some problems. But like I said, they dug deep and they are on a mission. Yeah. And one only has to just look and see how they are going to match up against Guyana tomorrow. If, yeah. we, if we're judging from Guyana's performance against the Leeward Islands in the first game, yeah. then I think it could be the Windward Islands, you know, maybe pushing Guyana again tomorrow. Yeah. I wondered about the Windward's top order batting, though, because coming from the the Windward Island sub-regional tournament, I, I saw where Nerissa Crafton and uh, Janila Glasgow were among the top scorers, and even in the warm-up matches. But they bat, I think, six and seven for, for the Windwards, yes. and they got runs again yesterday. They were actually the top scorers in the, in the batting. Uh, so maybe the Windwards could have some concern about their, their top order, because Crafton and um, Glasgow, uh, that pair, they've been doing a lot of the scoring for the Windwards um, in, in the warm-up game since they've been there, and they took that into the opening round of the tournament. Well, I think that is going to be the main problem for most of the teams, Lance. I, I think some teams going into this competition, they're having problems at the top of the order from maybe one to four. And so a lot of the coaches in this championship are going to try to keep back most of their better batters low down in the order to be able to counteract that. They're just hoping that one or two persons can survive at the top and then try and counteract that, that new ball. So if we, if we check out the scores yesterday, almost all of the teams would have lost wickets very early. You know, who wasn't 20 for four or 45 for five? They just lost wickets in, in clusters until when, you know, well, Jamaica was in a different frame of the, um, a different frame of mind, even though they got bowled out and they would feel very disappointed. 29 and 46.5 overs, um, you don't expect to get bowled out, but that's the, that's, that's the normal of the day. Yeah, well, Vernon, still a lot of cricket to play. And, of course, we'll be looking at all the matches very, very closely. And we're hoping to talk to you again really soon. I want to thank you so much for your time. Mm. Yes, thank you as well, too. Um, so tomorrow's games, I think, is going to be a matchup. Um, yeah. we, we're looking, hopefully, that we can get 100 from somebody. The Leewards have not won a game at this championship. So they are under some real pressure at home. So... We, we're hoping that, you know, we can see some more young emerging players, Rashada Williams. We see Janela Glasgow sending a message early, 20 years old. Yes. So we're hoping, you know, the Zara Claxton and company can come to the party. Yeah, well, spring off. Take care and we'll chat again soon. Thanks again. No problem. All right. We're going to take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, maybe it's Champions League time. You'll find out. Stay with us.